Hi everyone and welcome to yet another Plast tutorial. In this video we're going to be building a same pizza delivery project that you built with Fast API as well as January Storm 1. So feel free to follow along in this video. We're going to be building this project from scratch and we're going to be looking at the various concepts that are involved with building a REST API with Plast. We're going to be making use of some third party extensions that we can plug into our Plast application just to come up with a full uh, Plast API project. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up our folder in VS Code. So right now I've navigated to the folder in which I'm going to be creating our project. So I'm using Bash Terminal. This is Windows Subsystem for Linux. I'm on Windows. So feel free to follow along if you're using CMD uh, or PowerShell. Commands may be similar. And I'll try as much as I can to explain the difference. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create the folder. So I'm going to create the folder with make that. And then I'll call my folder the Flask uh, Pizza API. So I'm going to just call it the Flask Pizza API. So I'll cd into that Pizza API. So I'll say Pizza, and then I'll call this API. And once I do this, then I'll open up Visual Code with code. So this is basically going to open up Visual Studio Code within that folder. We need to open up our code within that folder. And right now our code has been opened up within this folder so we now have our folder within our VS code so right after doing that then the next thing i'm going to do is to go ahead and create a virtual environment so the virtual environment is going to enable us to keep the dependencies for our project so that we work with a python environment that is only for our project so we need to do that with python so i'm using python 3 since i'm on linux so i'm going to say python 3 so Feel free to use Python if you're on Windows. I'm going to say Python 3 minus M, VEM, and ENV. So, this is basically calling the VEM command or the VEM module as a command and then specifying that our virtual environment is going to be within the folder called ENV. So, I'm going to press enter and this is going to go ahead and create our virtual environment within our project folder. So, right after doing this, the next thing is going to be to activate our virtual environment as well as to basically go ahead and install our project dependencies. So we've done with creating our virtual environment. Now the next thing is going to be to activate our virtual environment. So we need to activate our virtual environment with source. And then it's going to be env. So I'm going to go to the bin folder and then I call the activate script. So this is going to activate our virtual environment just like we see here. So this is going to say env. So if you're on uh, something like Windows, you would have something like env bin and then activate, you can call this command with source and then you should also go ahead and activate your virtual environment so the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and install Flask so I'm going to head over to the terminal and say pip install Flask and this is going to go ahead and install Flask so if I go to our Visual Studio code, we've already created our virtual environment right here so in the terminal is where I've activated, and I've activated it and now I'm installing Flask so Flask has been installed, and I'm going to go ahead and check if Flask is installed. So I'm going to pick this, and this is going to go ahead and show that our dependencies have been installed. And we need to create a requirements.txt file. It's going to allow us to keep track of our project dependencies. So I'll do that with pip freeze, and then I'll specify that we want the results of this command to be written within our requirements.txt file. So I'm going to say requirements dot txt and that is going to go ahead and create our requirements to txt file as well as to write our dependencies in there so if i go back to our various code right here so i need to close this so when i go to the requirements we now see flask has been installed within it within the project as well as its dependencies so now the next thing is going to be setting up our project so i'm going to close our requirements to txt file and the first thing i'm going to do is to create our api folder so i'm going to create a folder right here and then this folder is going to be, sorry for this, we need to call this folder the API folder. So this is going to be the API folder. And then within here, I'm going to create the Danda init.py file that's going to show that this is going to be a package or a collection of modules. So I'm just going to write this as init.py. I think I made a mistake in the naming, so let me rename this. So this is going to be uh, Danda init. So within here, I'm going to go ahead and create what we call an application factory. So an application factory is just going to help us to create uh, multiple instances of our application uh, as 
in the context of what we may want to use the application for. So I'm going to create a function that I'm going to call the create app function, which is going to basically help us to return our application. And that we shall create an instance for it, then we'll be able to carry out whatever configurations we may want. So I'm just going to import our flask. So I'm going to say from flask, I'm going to import flask, which is the class. And then I'll create a function, which I'm going to call the create app function. So for now, we're going to leave it without any parameters. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the Flask instance within our create app function. And I'll specify the import name, which is going to be as the under name variable. And then I'll go ahead and basically return just this app instance. So just like that, we've been able to set up our Flask server. So to run our Flask server, what I'm going to do is to go to the terminal. So I'm going to basically play a main terminal with Ctrl and L. So I'm going to Ctrl L. And after controlling an L, then I'll have to show Flask that this is going to be our application. So basically what I'm going to do is to tell Flask that our API package or our API folder is containing our Flask code. So I'm going to export, I'm going to say export Flask app as in this case it's going to be our API folder. So it's going to set the environment variable of the API folder as our Flask app. And to verify if our environment variable has been set, we can do something like echo, then I'll say Flask app, which is basically going to return our API folder. So right after doing that, we have our Flask command that's going to enable us to run our API. So we need to say Flask, and when I say Flask, we see that this command basically has the different commands that you may run with it. So for example, routes, this is going to return the various routes that we are going to hook onto our application. We have the run command that basically is going to run our development server. The shell command is going to help us to run a shell within the given app context. So I'm going to play our terminal with Ctrl and L, and then go ahead and run our server. So I'm going to say Flask run. And this is going to go ahead and open our API at localhost 5000. 